So the question here is how fast was this car moving off this cliff? Um, what was its initial velocity? All right, let's go ahead and say that you're going to measure a couple things. Let's say this distance here you measure to be 20 meters. Let's say the height of the cliff you measure to be 30 meters. And again, you want to know what's the initial velocity when he left the cliff. So you're going to solve these questions. Yeah. Is this the moment, like, you know, when we learned about the final velocity for mm -hmm. um, this, how it was like the instant before it hit the ground? Mm -hmm. Is the initial velocity the instant before it goes off the cliff? Yeah, the instant, exactly. Great question. So the instant before he leaves the cliff, that would be our initial. And then once he's off the cliff, gravity is going to start pulling him down, so that velocity is going to start changing as he drops. Alright, so the way we're going to approach this problem is really the same as we have been doing. The only difference is we now have two dimensions. We have our x dimension, we have our y dimension, and just as I mentioned, we're going to keep them isolated. We're going to keep them independent of each other. So we're going to set up givens for both x and y. So for example, instead of just simply v initial, we're going to have v initial x, we're going to have v final x, acceleration x, delta dx, tx. Same thing on the y side. v initial y, v final y, ay, dy, <coughs> All right, so let's see what we know in this problem. I'll just go down the list. Do we know the V initial on X? No. no. In fact, that's what we're looking for, right? So let's subscript this. We want to know how fast is that car leaving the cliff, V initial in the X direction. That's what we're looking for. Uh, do we need a V final? Zero. This is not zero. So just like was mentioned, it, the V final means right before it hits the ground. So obviously after it hits the ground, it's not moving. This means right before the ground. How about A and X? Do we know the acceleration in the X direction? So to think about this, let's, let's imagine the car in the air here. Here's our car in the air. Once you leave the cliff, if you, let's say your first reaction is to hit the brakes. If you hit the brakes while you're in the air, are you going to slow down? No. Okay. If you hit the gas while you're in the air, are you going to speed up? Is there anything speeding you up or slowing you down? horizontally? No. Okay? Once you've left that cliff, nothing is going to speed you up or slow you down. Remember, we are going to be ignoring air resistance, just like the last unit. So once you've left it, there's going to be zero acceleration in the x direction. Now that doesn't mean there's no acceleration. Is there an acceleration? Yes. What's speeding us up? gravity. In what direction is gravity pulling on us? Down. Down. So there is an acceleration, it's just not horizontal. So let's write that on the vertical side. Our acceleration is negative 9.8. Alright, let's keep going. dx, do we know this? This would be our horizontal displacement. That's going to be 20. Do we know the time? Okay, let's go in the y direction. Do we know v initial y? This is going to be zero. Good, why is it zero? So initially, right here, the car is just going horizontal. So it's kind of like a flat surface here. It's just horizontal. Now once he leaves the cliff, yes, he's going to start falling. But initially, this is going to be zero. So this will always be true if the question says it's like horizontal, it's posed to you that way. Now if he was jumping off a ramp or something, 
or there's a decline, then that would not be zero. But we're going to stick with the simple case first. Next week or later this week, we'll do some of the harder ones. Uh, how about the final y? Zero. Nope. Again, this is not going to be zero. It's right <coughs> before impact, not after. Uh, how about dy? 30. 30. Is this positive 30 or negative 30? Negative. negative. We are 30 meters below where we started, so we're going to make it negative 30. Okay, so there's our set of givens. Uh, let's go back to the original question. What was the velocity of the car when it leaves the cliff? So we're looking for V initial X. Remember, how many givens are we trying to figure out to solve these problems? Three. How many do we have here? Two. So we do not have enough information at this point. So here's the big kind of concept for these questions. Besides isolation, the next big concept is these should be isolated except for one variable. One variable is actually the same for both dimensions. Which one is that? Time. Good. Time is the same. The time it takes me to get here is the same horizontally as vertically. There's no such thing as a time x and a time y. There's just time. So time is what we'd call the crossover variable. That's the same for both dimensions. So we're going to only have a time. So here's kind of the big thing of what you're going to do for these problems. If you can find time in the y direction, then you know time in the x direction. So notice we have one, two, three variables. We can find this time, and then we know this time, and that gives us our third variable. And now we can find the other unknowns that we want. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take our y variables. Now, it's very important that you don't mix and match. You can't take an acceleration from y and a velocity from x. You have to keep them the same. The only crossover is time. So let's take a look. One, two, three, four. Which equation is going to work for us here? So we're going to use delta d. Now, I'm going to subscript all of these y's. Delta dy equals viy plus one-half ay t squared. So our delta dy was negative 30. Our v initial was simply 0. All right, let's just do the algebra here negative 60 divided by negative 9.8. Don't forget to square root both sides. A lot of people, that's a big mistake. Forget to square root. Square root both sides. So like 2 point something. So again, that tells us that we just found the time in y, but that's the same as the time in x. There's only one time, same for both. That now just gives us our third known value. We now have these three knowns. We should be able to find the fourth. Okay, choose an equation. I think the same one's going to work, yeah? Okay, dx uh, is 20. V initial is what we're solving for. Time is 2.47 plus. Here's the big mistake. A lot of people go 1 half, negative 9.8, T squared. What's wrong with that? A is zero. Okay, A is zero, right. So in the x direction, A was zero. In the y direction, it was 9.8. We're going to stick with the x direction at this point. Okay, let's find Vix. What do we get? 
8 point something? 8 point 10? Something like that. So that's our speed. So that's about 17, 18 miles an hour. Did this guy lose control off the cliff at 18 miles an hour? Probably not. Okay, so we'd look into other things. Okay, maybe he was murdered, okay, and they drove it off the cliff, or it's a suicide, or I don't know. Maybe a cell phone, even a cell phone, I think at that speed you wouldn't lose control. Um, all right, so I'm going to ask one more question here. Let's ask this. How fast was he moving on impact? So how fast was he moving when he hit the ground? So in other words, which of my variables am I looking for? V final. v final. So we're looking for V final. Now notice in our givens here, our variables, how many V finals are there? Two. Two. There's V final X and there's V final Y. Well, which one am I asking about? Both. Both. Both of them. Good. Why both? So when he hits the ground, What's, what direction is he moving when he hits the ground? Okay. Kind of like that, right? He's moving at an angle. As he's flying through the air, when he hits the ground, he's going to be moving at an angle. So what we're looking for, that's our V final here. We can call this maybe V final total. So to find that, we're going to find V final X. We're going to find V final Y. We're not going to add them up. What are we going to do? Use Pythagorean theorem to find the total. All right, so that's kind of our next step. We're going to go ahead and try to find that. Let's go up here. The initial x we just found, right? That was 8.10. Um, we have four things. We should have no problem finding that fifth. Actually, you don't even have to calculate this if you take a step back and think. What does acceleration of zero mean? Constant what? Velocity, right? Zero means the velocity stays the same. So if the initial is 8, what is the final? 8. So the final is 8.1. So we already know that. We don't even have to make calculations. We just thought about it. We saw the concept of zero acceleration means it's not changing. Now that's only horizontal. So we found this, 8.10, here. We still have to find the vertical. So the vertical started at zero. Is it going to end at zero? No. It's speeding up, right? The car is getting faster and faster and faster in the negative y direction. So we're going to just go ahead and choose an equation. We have four things at this point. You should be good to find the fifth. <coughs> so you have your choice of several. Let's just use this one. So v initial and the remember this is the y direction. That's 0 plus negative 9.8. 2.47 20 what? 24.2 Okay, so we just found V final Y, that's negative 24.2 Now we're just going to do what we've been doing the last couple days. It's actually easier than what we did yesterday because this is already a right triangle. We don't have to fix it. 
So just find the B final total, right? A squared, B squared, C squared. What happens when you square a negative? It just becomes positive anyway, right? Twenty-six-ish? Twenty-five-ish? Twenty-five point five? Okay. Alright, can we just plop in a negative right here? And we're done? No. How do we specify direction when we have something like this? You have to find the angle. Good. So we are going to find our angle, so we'll use our tangent as we always do. Tangent theta equals 24.2 over 8.1. You could plop in a negative here if you want. Inverse tangent it. Seventy-one point five. And how do we specify this angle? Based on this, if we use our north, south, east, west, how would we say this angle? East, south, east. south of east. Yeah. Now, in a problem like this, you could also say below <coughs> the horizontal. That would also be appropriate. And if you plug it in your calculator, you actually would have gotten a negative number, negative 71.5. And that's what that means, below the horizontal. <coughs>